All right, big daddies, we are back. It is, my God, it is 4 January, the year of the Lord, 2024. We made it through 2023. And I predict that 2024 is going to be a hell of a year, not in a very good way at all. Maybe Bitcoin will be good, but everything else politically, economically, it's going to be really bad. I'm, I'm being honest. It, everything cannot be going the way it is and uh, like a house of cards, it's going to all come tumbling down from housing costs, rentals, uh, people's personal credit overdrawn, the national debt, wars. Oh, it's just not looking good. Not to mention it's an election here. Oh, my God. But anyway, we made it. We are in 2024. And today, today we are going to do a CPU mining profitability update. I try to do these now and then. I think it's a bit boring. You know, you guys get the gist. You turn on some rigs and you make some pennies. And it's just a hobby. That's why I have to keep telling people, you're not going to make life-changing money with this. If you look at Warren Buffett and uh, his business partners and everything, the secret to wealth, you got to get to that $100,000 mark in savings. Get to that $100,000 mark. And then when you start investing wisely, you get that 10%. And then you keep compounding. Compounding is the secret sauce and time in the market to wealth building. CPU crypto mining is not where it's at. <laughs> it's, it's a hobby. Having said that, let's have fun. All right. I try to keep it real, man. I'm just trying to be one of those guys on the tubes, on the inter interwebs that keeps things honest and real and a little pessimistic because you have to be <clears throat> in a doubt but verify mode just to protect yourself and just to be realistic. So where are we at currently? Like I said, of January 4th, we have a combined rig, six rigs, mostly 3,900 X's AMD Ryzen's, uh, making about four bucks. Uh, let's see, my total right here is 0 0.00687303 Satoshis. And to be honest, that's all I really care about. I want to see this number go up. When um, Bitcoin hit 45,000 a day ago, this obviously equated to a lot more in fiat US dollars. It was about 310 bucks. Oh, but I didn't sell. It's still in my nice ash wallet accumulating. So look, before we go on, before we move on, let's, I don't know, I should get some kind of structure to this crap, but I don't. I'm just lazy. So let's just go to the stocks. Where are we at, big daddies? We are at, Bitcoin is at 43,000 right now. It dropped 2,000 from the 45. As you can see, this little spike right here, big daddies, right there, 44,167. It went up to 45. Remember, it rose over 45 for a little bit. Now it's back down. And it was at 42.6 earlier, so it, it kind of corrected a little bit, which is fine. People took profits, and I have a whole video on the psychology of when to take profits. You really should take profits now, and it, it depends how much you have in the game. If you only have a couple bucks, it's not worth it. Although I did make 11 bucks, because when you buy through Fidelity, they have a crypto account. You can buy Ethereum, bleh, or you can buy Bitcoin. And but say the price is uh, let's see forty three thousand. When you buy it, they buy it at a higher price because they take their fee out, right? So forty three five, right? So now you got to hope it got it has to go above forty three five. And the reverse is true when you go to sell it, they're going to give you a lower price because they're taking their fee out. So I saw I was up twenty five bucks, woohoo! And I hit forty five four. I think it hit forty five thousand six hundred. So I said, oh my god. And I learned if there's a run up, it's always going to come back down. Crypto is highly volatile. It's highly speculative. So I took my, I saw 20 bucks. Previously, I made a couple hundred bucks and I took it out then. So I was up 300 bucks, right? And I uh, said, oh, okay, 300 bucks is 300 bucks. It's better than zero. And it's better, better than being in a hole like with my Tesla stock down 15%. So I said, hey, a little bit adds up like a snowball going downhill. <clears throat> so I took my 300 bucks. Then I only invested, uh, like, say, a thousand bucks back in. 
Then it was up 25 bucks with the little spike. I went, ooh, 25 bucks. Woohoo. It's all fun, right? It's like freaking playing the um the one arm bandit at the casino. The the slot machines. <clears throat> so I took uh sold 25 bucks, sold it, boom. But really I got 11 bucks because yeah, Fidelity takes their fee based on the spot price they sell it at. Yeah, so anyway, we're at 43.1. And this price here will reflect right here. I don't really care about that. I care about the Satoshi. So where are we at? We got some rigs running yet. Running smooth, man. Temperatures are fine. No issues at all, except you do come in maybe once a day and eyeball it. Expand these out. When you expand them out, I notice right away my 3900 is running a bit low on the hash. It's about 10. 9.86 so what I do in this case you can do it from here you can stop and restart it or you can go to the rig itself you can go to the rig itself and we'll do that right now but you see yeah it's about there 0 0.0137 0 0.012 hmm and let's go to the devices 0.0134. Everything looks good. 62 cents USD. And as I look over here for errors, so this is telling me 63 cents on that rig. Now, what I do now, just to verify things look good, I see no errors. I will run over to the actual profitability calculator and I put in my device and my electricity cost, right? calculate give it a second this is my daily use case guys if you want to know how boring my life is this is it for when i deal with crypto stuff so it's saying it should be at 88 cents and mine is 28 cents electricity so i'm at 60 so it seems like it's running a bit low let's go back 60 so it's running at 60 i'm about 20 cents up so what i do here I'm just going to do this again. I'm going to go to my dashboard. I'm going to stop it. I'm going to go to benchmarks. I got my 3900 here. I got XM rig. Here it shows 11.4 on the benchmark. I'm going to clear that out. Clear all speeds. I cleared it out. And I don't care about excavator. XM rig, let's go start benchmark. And here's my core uh, settings up here 1.1 volt, and I did that to keep the temperatures down. I'm tempted to up the clock speed, but I don't want to mess with this stuff. I don't want to burn my house down. So it's benchmarking. Let's all sit together and watch the benchmarking process. So you can go click on this. You got 53 Celsius. You got benchmarking. You got the old dashboard. All right, wipe that out. You can do the stats. When it's done, when it's done benchmarking, it'll kick off. And I'll probably get that damn MSR error, which I just got right there. So what do I do here? All right, we go over to dashboard. It's a pain in the butt. I think there's a little bug on Windows with this miner, but who cares? It, that's what I do. Boom, it's gone. We'll let that little bastard run for a little bit and we'll go back over here. Let's check the other ones. So Rocco 8 is there. These are looking pretty decent. Let's go look at one of those other ones here. All right, it's coming up. It's coming up, big daddies. All right, come on. Let's go. Big money. Oh, here we go. It's always an issue with my network. Come on. Try it again. Bear with me. Sometimes it takes a couple tries. I don't, there we go. But yeah, so this one's 74. 70. And what was it telling me? A bit low. Interesting. I need to check that. I might restart the rigs, but this is what I go through. I kind of verify. <clears throat> so it's 60 cents after electricity. Huh. But it should be 88 cents on income.
Interesting. I have to figure out what's going on, so I might have a little problem here. Yeah, interesting. If you guys know what's going on, let me know. Do I need to update my uh, clock speed by chance? Everything's down, unless the calculator is a bit off. And it could be, because if I got two rigs doing the same, I'm thinking those are mostly accurate, and then the uh, profitability calculator is off. Yeah, they're all running the same. I think it's probably fine. So if they're all nominal, if you all got pretty much a consistent across the board without errors, I think you're good. So we're doing 64 cents a day. Not as good as it used to be in the uh, Turkey Day Thanksgiving when it was like a buck 80 USD. So Crypto Jim, Crypto Jim, why do you keep the rigs running then? Well, they're not doing much. I mean, they're not making much heat. They are only burning about 90 watts. Uh, CPU with the fan not much at all compared to a damn GPU and they are a small form factor They don't they sit on a little Borg baking shelf. It's my Borg CPU rig. You've seen it It's awesome. If you haven't seen it go check out some other videos where I have the Borg machine It's kind of funny because the prism lights on the Ryzen AMD light up. It's oh, it's fun again It's a toy. I look at it as a toy that gener generates me a few pennies in crypto a month so that's where I'm at. All right, so this all looks good. Let's go look at number nine. Yeah, see, they're all the same. That's the one I just restarted. We are looking okay then. I'm happy with that. I'm not gonna waste any more time on it. I try to spend under a half hour on this crap because I, again, I used to be so involved with mining that it took hours, rewiring stuff, setting up GPUs, finding the optimal overclock settings, using afterburner on the GPU, trying to keep the heat down, trying to dissipate the heat. Trying to manage my electricity usage. Uh, it became a whole problem of heat, electricity, and space. And it became too much. It was just stupid. And also, trying not to burn your house down. Yeah, you got to watch that. And then these cards go bad. You're out. Those cards are expensive at the time. 800 bucks. You know, six, 600 bucks to 1,000 bucks. Boom, it goes out. Good luck. Good luck dealing with AMD or um, NVIDIA to try to get something fixed through a warranty. Forget it. It's over, Johnny. Warranties are not worth the paper they're written on. Remember, that's a life lesson right there. Yeah. When you go buy a warranty, you're just giving them money. It's like when companies now expect you to tip for everything. Uh, when you go to a self uh, fast food, do you want to add a tip? And what happens is on those Q readers or cube readers or anywhere, when you give a tip, not directly to someone that actually served you, like a waiter and that, that's when you tip. You tip them cash. But if you go through a cube and you put it on the card and it goes, you want a tip for us, you know, you standing in line and ordering a Chipotle burger and uh, you put that tip in, guess what? It goes right to the corporate pocket. It doesn't get disseminated down to the employees at all. It goes into their coffers and then they count that as an income stream. So it's a trick. So it's another way to make money. Uh, you know, corporations are getting, it's, it's becoming bad. These guys, the greed factor, the way to take your money. So you have to arm yourself with education. And they're hoping people are stupid because most people are stupid. We're called useful idiots. And if you notice, I say 60% of the society are dumb. Look at what happened a couple of years ago with the, uh, the uh, span, uh, what, do you, what do they call it, scamdemic? People all fell for it. You, do, you just got to watch that. People are so easily duped and corporations use psychology to trick you. So they're thinking, oh, I should leave a tip for the little guy working behind the counter. He doesn't get it. Unless you're being served by a waiter where you can write in a tip line on them, they get the tip. But uh, when you put it on a cube car or a checkout, they're not getting anything. So just stop the crazy tip culture. Only when you're being served or you're um, on a tour with a, a guide, when you're being served by a waiter, a bartender, that's when you tip. That's the normal. Everything else, just don't do it. All right, what else is going on? That was a tangent. So there's we, ah, there is where we are, ladies and gentlemen. Ooh, it went up to five bucks, big daddies. Look at that. So yeah, we're gonna be hovering around here. I wanna get this. I just wanna keep stacking this little guy because we have the um, spot ETF or the ETF approval, the Bitcoin ETF approval coming. It's gotta be coming within a week. And that's why Bitcoin kind of jumped randomly at a specific hour at 1800 two days ago, up to 45,000. It's, it's all automated or something's going on. Boom, right on, right on 1800 hour or yeah, eight, 6 p.m. Eastern time. Boom, it goes up. And then uh, it's funny when you look at the volume times, it's almost set on the hour. So it's all almost algorithmically programmed. I don't know. That's my guess. 
But we're waiting on that. And also remember the number 430, that's April 30th. That's around the time of the halving. And you can go to the nice hash area and they have a uh, Bitcoin having countdown clock. You can turn that on and enjoy. Have, have hours of enjoyment with your family and your dog watching the uh, Bitcoin having countdown. All right. That's all I got, guys. Little CPU update. Longer than I expected. That's what she said. All right. I am out. Go forth to great things. Yeah. Keep mining and um, hang on for a hell of a year, guys. It's going to get rocky.